Let her go. Leave, you <laughs> the spoils. Of course, she kind of did do that. Um, Islam. I was involved in Islamic ceremonies. Prescribing my medications wrong on purpose and that I was going to expose them. She was having very bizarre behavior that was considered psychotic. If you said, I'm going to the, you know, the, the voodoo witch doctor because I want somebody. Number seven, intense exorcism. The video depicts a fervent exorcism with the exorcist commanding the demonic entity to leave the possessed individual, John. The exorcist invokes the power of God and Jesus while rebuking the demonic presence, addressing it with authority and conviction. Through prayers, declarations, and gestures like the sign of the cross, the exorcist confronts the demon, asserting God's supremacy over it. The exorcism reveals the intensity of spiritual warfare as the exorcist engages in verbal combat with the demon challenging its authority and demanding its departure. The language used is confrontational and forceful. We receive back on our heads. We receive back on our heads. Don't, John said, I want Papa Gaby to say it. Of course, you kind of did do that. Um, Islam, I was involved in Islamic ceremonies. We receive a curse. Seven times greater. Seven times greater. Come out of him in the name of Jesus. Oh. If you said, I'm going to the, you know, the, the voodoo witch doctor because I want somebody out of it. Out. Uh, out. From every out. part of him. Uh, From every part of him. Who do, you, who do you think is compelling suicide bombers? You spit it out? For that you take judgment. Get up, Papa Gaty. Get up. Uh, get up. Every demon on this planet inside you. Now, mind you, if you had gone out to do this. Every spirit. Holy. Out. We subject to the sign of the cross. With seriously malevolent intent you'd be at greater risk. Aiming to weaken the grip of the demon on John's soul. References to voodoo and invoking the legend of Saint Anthony illustrate the exorcist's belief in the demonic realm and the need for divine intervention to combat it. The video highlights the profound belief in the power of exorcism within certain religious circles, as well as the perceived severity of demonic possession. It portrays the exorcist's unwavering commitment to freeing John from the demonic influence even as the struggle intensifies. Number 6. Divine Deliverance Testament Ed Citronelli's ministry, empowered by the Holy Spirit, has witnessed profound spiritual deliverance, including an astonishing account of a 16-year-old girl's journey to hell. Through the authority of Jesus, Citronelli frees individuals from Satan's grasp and the chains of destruction. The narrative underscores the belief in Jesus' omnipotence to heal any ailment and shatter any bondage. It emphasizes the transformative power of faith in Jesus Christ, the ultimate Lord. The story serves as a testament to the efficacy of spiritual warfare and the capacity for divine intervention to conquer even the most dire circumstances. Number 5. Demonic Exorcism Experience In a quest to combat what they perceive as increasing demonic influence, Rev. Bob Larson and his church conduct exorcisms, aiming to liberate individuals from spiritual oppression. One such case involves Jeanette, who seeks relief from years of depression through spiritual intervention. During the exorcism, Jeanette experiences vivid visions and erratic behavior, believed by the exorcists to be manifestations of demonic possession. The ordeal lasts 40 intense minutes, marked by Jeanette's fluctuating states of distress, calmness, laughter, and terror. According to exorcist beliefs, signs such as yawning and belching indicate the demon's departure from the body. The exorcism is physically and emotionally taxing for Jeanette, who undergoes vomiting and exhaustion as the demon is allegedly expelled. Despite potential skepticism, 
Jeanette attests to the tangible relief and sense of liberation following the exorcism, firmly believing in the efficacy of the process. For Jeanette, the exorcism represents not only a physical and spiritual battle, but also a transformative journey towards freedom from torment. While skeptics may question the validity of exorcisms, for individuals like Jeanette, the experience offers profound catharsis and the hope of a new beginning. Break the curse. No! As you leave, you return the spoils. <laughs> the Romans came and set our houses on fire. In the name of Jesus. No ripping your <laughs> the time in which we live, and demons like this time. <laughs> Free from the grip of perceived demonic influence. Number four, Erica's psychotic transformation. Erica's life takes a drastic turn when she begins exhibiting symptoms akin to possession by a demon. In a matter of days, she transforms from a polished professional to a paranoid individual, alarming her family. Concerned for her well-being, they rush her to the emergency room, hoping for swift resolution. However, the hospital visit only exacerbates Erica's paranoia. She becomes convinced of medication conspiracy, escalating her distress. Erica's rapid deterioration puzzles her family and medical professionals alike. Her father and stepmother grapple with the disconcerting reality of witnessing her drastic behavioral shift. Doctors, including specialist Marilyn Levy, are baffled by Erica's psychotic episodes and fragmented state of mind. Erica's condition spirals, leaving her loved ones feeling helpless and disconnected. As Erica undergoes testing and medical evaluation, the gravity of her situation becomes increasingly evident. The perplexing nature of her symptom challenges healthcare providers who strive to understand and treat her condition effectively. And to look your child in the eye and completely don't know what's going on in her head anymore. And... It's the steroids. They're poison. I'm sorry, I'm not following. So, I'd like so to I'd ask, like you, to ask you a few questions. questions. Honey, let's not play Honey, let's not play games driving my medications wrong on purpose, and I was gonna expose them. Time that I saw Erica, she had been seen by some of my colleagues. You have to tell them. I have the evidence. But rather than help. She was having very bizarre behavior that was considered psychotic. That's the one. To raving paranoid. And are not connecting. It's startling and haunting at the same time. Just, we need to see a doctor. She's not in touch with reality. What could have happened that would cause such a severe reaction in her? Number three, subway disturbance. The incident on the Canadian subway, captured on video and shared on social media, has sparked widespread speculation and debate about the young woman's behavior. In the footage, she exhibits bizarre actions, including growling and attacking a male passenger seemingly without provocation. This alarming behavior unfolded in Edmonton, adding to the repertoire of strange occurrences often witnessed on public transportation, particularly in bustling cities like Toronto. The first video shows the woman visibly distressed, pulling at her shirt and necklace before abruptly discarding the latter. Her erratic conduct continues in the second video when she suddenly grabs the male passenger by the throat and punches him, prompting a swift reaction from both him and nearby commuters. The subsequent confrontation outside the subway doors further escalates, leading to the intervention of transit peace officers. Despite the altercation resulting in both individuals being fined for public fighting, questions linger regarding the root cause of the woman's actions. Some speculate about drug use, mental health issues, or even the possibility of possession, while others question if it could be a publicity stunt for a forthcoming movie. Number two traditional healing practices in the UK. The footage depicts a common occurrence within the UK where imams conduct ceremonies to expel evil spirits or jinn from individuals. Imam Ayub Tayeb, operating in Sheffield, charges 60 pounds for his services, which involve recitations from the Quran. One woman seeking relief from perceived black magic-induced afflictions underwent such a ceremony. 
She suffered from a variety of symptoms including vomiting, womb pain, insomnia, headaches, back pain and memory issues which conventional medicine failed to alleviate. In the video, the woman, veiled in a burqa, undergoes the exorcism ritual, swaying as Imam Tayeb chants Quranic verses. This practice reflects a belief in spiritual intervention for ailments not adequately addressed by medical means. While some may view it skeptically, for others it offers solace and potential relief from their suffering. Such ceremonies highlight the intersection of religious belief, cultural practices, and healthcare seeking behavior in communities where traditional healing methods hold sway alongside modern medicine. Number 1. Exercising Jinn The concept of exorcism, as depicted in various cultures and religions, involves the removal of malevolent entities or spirits from individuals believed to be possessed. In Islamic tradition, exorcism is often performed using verses from the Holy Quran, which are recited to drive out the possessing entity, commonly referred to as a jinn. The process typically begins with a thorough assessment to determine if the individual's symptoms align with possession. Qualified individuals, such as trained religious scholars or practitioners, then recite specific verses from the Quran while invoking the name of Allah. These verses are believed to have protective and cleansing qualities capable of expelling the jinn. The recitations are accompanied by other rituals, such as blowing onto water or the affected person and supplications for protection and healing. The process may require multiple sessions depending on the severity of the possession and the resistance of the jinn. It's important to note that belief in jinn possession and the efficacy of exorcism varies among individuals and communities within the Islamic faith. While some consider it a valid practice, others may approach such phenomena with skepticism or seek alternative explanations for psychological or physiological symptoms. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.